Okay, so today we're taking a look at meeting rooms too. The question is given an array of meeting time intervals consisting of start and end times. Find the minimum number of conference rooms required, which basically just means that you have to find what is the maximum number of meetings that are going on parallelly at any time. So say we are given these three meeting times, which consist of a start time and an end time given that the start time is always going to be smaller than the end time. How we can think about this problem is say we consider the, the first meeting which we will just place in meeting room 1. So it starts at 0, ends at 30 and it is placed in meeting room 1. The second meeting starts at time 2 and ends at time 5. So when the second meeting is about to start, the first meeting has not ended. So the meeting room 1 is still occupied. So we have to allot a second meeting room with start time 2 and end time 5. When the third, when the third meeting is about to start, the start time is 7. The first meeting room is still occupied. But the second meeting room is now empty because you can see that the end time of the second meeting is 5 and because the start time of the third meeting is 7 in the second meeting room now we can place the third meeting so at any point of time there there was a maximum of two meetings that were having happening parallelly so the answer for this example will be 2. So how we will be going to uh, going about doing this solving this problem is we are going to abstract away the concept of meetings. We are just going to consider start times and end times. So we can just think of 0s, 2s, 5e, 7s, 10e, 30e so s obviously starts for start time uh, stands for start time and n stands for end time and over here you can see that i have sorted everything so basically what is going to happen is we will have some counter which will have say at the start will have a count of zero and each time you encounter a meeting that has started, you add one to it. And each time you encounter a meeting that has ended, you subtract one from it. Oh, sorry, zero. And you will also have another parameter called max parallel. So after each of these operations, you will find, you will try to see is the current parallel greater than the max parallel? If yes, then that is the maximum that you have seen till now and you can just save that. And in the end, you can return max parallel. So you can do it in this way where you have a single array which will contain all of these numbers which will contain all the starts and the ends that will be like a vector of a pair but an easier method to do is do this would be to just separate separate the uh, start times and the end times. so you can have instead of one array you can have two arrays which will be 0 2 and 7 and end times of 5, 10 and 30. Again, both of these will be sorted. You will have a start pointer and an end pointer, sorry, start time pointer and an end time pointer. And the start time pointer, so each time you have a start po time pointer, you will check is the start time pointer, the, the, the time that is the start time pointer is pointing to, is it uh, greater than the time that the end time pointer is pointing to, which is five over here. It is not. so over here for zero you just add one to the parallel case then you move on to two which is also not greater than five 
so you add one more so right now the number of parallels are two then you come to seven at this point you see that seven is greater than five so you subtract one from it but you also start seven so you add one to it so the net uh, amount would be would still remain two this is because at seven because you're not checking at the time five you are checking at the time seven at the time seven one meeting room has been given up but another meeting room has been taken up by seven so that's why the net number of meetings remains uh, two so whenever you reach the end of the start times that means that this is the maximum number of meetings that will uh, that will be there that will happen parallelly so you don't really need to care about the end times so let's code this so first we will have two vector of int's which will have start time and end time we will add all the start times to the start time array uh, vector and the end times to the end time vector okay uh, so now after this we need to sort both of these Um, now we will create the two pointers both of these will be pointing to zero right now and we will also create the two counters parallel and max parallel so now we can start We are starting the loop or we are running through the entire operation just the number of times as the number of meetings exist so for each single meeting start time we will just calculate it once and so at this point we need we want to check if start time of start ptr is greater than equal to the end time of end ptr then we can subtract parallel because the end time has like one meeting has ended and because that meeting has already ended so we can move on to the next meeting that will end and at each interval at each point that we are doing this operation the start time will always increase because we are only performing this operation when a new meeting is starting this is very important to understand so the parallel now parallel count will also increase every single time and the start ptr will also obviously increase and then we check for max parallel this step is not important like the parallel uh the parallel uh, variable will actually give you the final answer this step of finding out the maximum of max parallel and parallel is not important but from a logical standpoint I'm writing this so that the logic becomes more clear so we just find out if the max parallel is greater if, if the parallel is greater than max parallel then max parallel is equal to parallel and then in the end we can return this um, oh sure
have I made a spelling mistake? Yes. Okay, I have made many spelling mistakes. Okay, cool. 